Hey, Purple Valkyrie, I have a question for you. Oh, yeah. What's that? Do you like gummy bears? I actually do. I love gummy bears. I love any I... kind of gummy fruit flavored sweets. Gummy worms, gummy bears, gummy rings, you name it, I'm a fan of it. It's interesting because this article comes to us from the Smithsonian and came out May 18th of this year. It is entitled The Colorful History of Harbo Gold Bears, the world's first gummy bears. Now the year 2022 marks the 100 year anniversary of the German candy company's flagship product. Wow. I had no idea gummy bears were 100 years old. I didn't, and Harry Bow are pretty much the you know, the go-to brand, especially in Europe. Are, are, are they as popular over in the US as well? Oh, absolutely. No, they're, they're the go-to. Now, there are other ones. There are organic forms of it. And of course, I'm sure you have them in Europe. They also have gummy cola bottles. They have mm -hmm. gummy sour snakes. They have the gummy star mix, which is actually my favorite, where you get a sampler of every kind of gummy different creature flavor style that's out there but this is the one who started it all the gold bears so just over a century ago in 1920 a german confectioner stuck out on his own establishing a new company that would be called harbo an abbreviation uh derived of his name and the hometown of bonn so his name was hans regal Bond. And so he took the first two letters of those words and created the company. Originally, he worked out of his own kitchen with little more than a copper pot, rolling pin, and stove. He hired his first employee, who was his wife Gertrude, the next year. <laughs> While she was out delivering the products to customers on a bicycle, he experimented with hard candies before creating an entirely new sweet. And thus, the gummy bear was born. That's amazing. Can you imagine just coming up with a brand new confectionery that nobody's ever seen before? It is crazy, though. I mean, this wasn't created with computer technology. This didn't have a big bio lab with market research. This didn't have test markets. The deuce, like, I think I'm just going to mess around with heat and sugar and see what I get. The genius of individual effort and creativity over highly organized, air quotes, forced creativity. <laughs> the article goes on. We know the stories of Apple starting in a garage. And at the time, Harbo was a little bit like that, says Christian Blaman, Harbo's senior vice president of corporate communications. Regal, the man who started the company, had the will to do something different, to do something on his own and to start with very few opportunities as well as very little money. Now, he debuted his gummy bear prototype, originally calling it the Dancing Bear, or Tanzbaren in German in 1922. Larger and slimmer than today's modern gummy bears, the Tanzan bear shape was reportedly inspired by the real dancing bears that once entertained children at festivals across Europe. These things are actually kind of scary looking. I mean, I look at it. They, they almost look like they've been carved. I would yeah. love to see if they've still got the original molds that these things were made in. I'm sure they do. I'd actually eat one from 100 years ago. I actually, you wouldn't even have to bet me. But uh, <laughs> so the vice president of marketing for Harbo goes on, quote, the bear character is something cute and loved by children. Regal wanted to give his candy a face as well as personality. Harbo's gummy bears have undergone multiple makeovers over the decades, most prominently in 1960 when the company rebranded from dancing bears to golden bears. Today, these small chewy gummies come in a gold bag packed with five flavors, at least here in North America, raspberry, lemon, strawberry, pineapple, and orange but they're available in more than 100 countries with 160 million gold bears leaving factory floors around the world every day that's a lot of gummy bears i probably could maybe eat that many in a day i shouldn't but i probably could <laughs> this year harbor was marking its centenary its 100 year anniversary, if I said that wrong, of its flagship gummy bears with limited edition releases, including single flavor bags, as well as one of my favorites, blue raspberry flavored party hats, as well as a contest giveaway that will send four winners on a week long vacation to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. 
this article makes me want gummy bears for a lot. It really does. It really does. And I'm wondering why South Carolina, what's the connection to gummy bears? That's a really good question. Maybe Germans like to go to Myrtle Beach? Now, I've been to Myrtle Beach. I think it was way back in the 90s. And uh, yeah, I might want to go to a different beach because that one's really kind of crowded. But if you want to get your own custom made t-shirts and you know maybe get in a fight in a beach, Myrtle Beach is the place for you. Um, so <laughs> to quote, yes, I'm going to get hate mail from South Carolina. No disrespect. To quote, Harbo is the original creator of the Gummy Bear, so we're excited to celebrate the 100th birthday of our iconic gold bears in unique and meaningful ways, says Rick LaBurge, the chief operating officer of Harbo in America. Though 100 years ago, Regal was the first to create gummies in the shape of bears, the history of these gelatin-based sweets actually predates his own invention. According to Beth Kimmerly, the author of four books on American confectionery, gummy bears descend from precursors such as the gumdrop, Turkish delight, and wine gum, a non-alcoholic treat originating in the United Kingdom. Now, Purple Valkyrie, mm -hmm. I know that from Jelly Babies, eaten by Tom Baker and, of course, Doctor Who. Yes, absolutely. And I'm a huge fan of Jelly Babies. I think they're great. Not so much Turkish Delight. I was never uh, mm. particularly fun, but uh, gum drops, wine drops, absolutely. People still love them. I love wine gums. My brother, when he would come from Europe, would always bring a couple bags of them, the really good uh, Jelly Babies, the, the wine gums. They're absolutely fantastic. Different consistency mm -hmm. than the Gummy Bear, but I really like them. So again, this confectionery researcher says, my feeling is that the gummy's true predecessor is jam or jelly as a way to preserve fruit cooked in pectin and sometimes in starches. Now I've made my own jams and jellies and I can tell you that that makes a lot of sense to me because if you overcooked your jam or jelly, it likes to stick to the pan and you can peel that off and eat it. And it's really, really good. Yes. Like a wine gum. Yes. If you overcook it, you'll have a, a lot of trouble getting a spoon into it, let's just say. <laughs> In closing, Regal with Harbo was far from the only candy, candy manufacturer active in being creative in the early 1920s. There's an American company founded by Fred W. Ammond who came up with Chuckles, a sugar-covered jelly confection. My grandfather loved those. I had those as a kid all the time. They are pure sugar. There's really no other way to put them, but they're a moment in time. If you're a 70s or 80s kid, you know what chuckles are. Also, Henry Hyde, a German emigre to the United States, created jujubes. Now, I've had those. If you want to talk about needing to get sticks and uh, a dentist to scrub them out between your teeth, <laughs> jujubes are for you as well as juji fruits. But it was Regal, again, who made his mark through a, his strong business sense, applying new advancements in the flavoring of his gummy dancing bears and a coloring method because he understood candy is all about appearance and texture. He took the latest confectionery flavor, added color technology, and applied them to the nth degree to formulate his gummy bears. And of course, mm -hmm. we are talking about someone working in his kitchen 100 years ago. What a great story. It really was. It's it's so good to to learn the history of these things because you see them on the on the shelf when you go shopping. You don't really think about them, but to to know that the they are celebrating a hundred years and that he had the foresight to create these things with a particular image that would be appealing as well as the taste. Uh, he really was ahead of his time. So if you love gummy bears, you can thank Hans Riegel, who is on the left side of the screen, as well as his wife, Gertrude Riegel. They gave us the gummy bears that so many of us around the world love today. Uh, I think I'm going to pop out and go get some gummy bears to celebrate. Good idea. Thanks so much for covering this with me, Purple Valkyrie. I like talking about candy. You're welcome. Yes, we need to go find more candy related articles. This was fun. Need is a strong word. Want is probably more accurate. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for a very sweet, phenomenal. You have a great day. Take care, everyone. As ever, this is Salty Texas Sea. I am Corey DB. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you've seen and heard, please hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you on board. That way you know and we have things like live streams, which we are going to be doing every Tuesday evening. Take care. I hope you're having a great 2022.